Good morning, class! I am Teacher Crystal, your teacher for today. Before we proceed, let's pray first. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom is love, commits me here. Ever this day, be at my side, to light and guard, to roll and guide, Amen. Good morning, class! So for today's learning adventure, you will be able to understand the story, The Last Leaf. Appreciate literature as an art form and make an alternative ending suitable to the story. But before that, I would like to set a house rules. I call it 3B. Be respectful, be cooperative, and be honest. Alright? So before we proceed to our lesson proper, let's have first a fun activity. Are you ready? Okay, I will be reading the questions twice and you will select the right letter of your answer. Is it clear? Okay, number one. This is an acute disease of the lungs and caused by bacterium streptococcus pneumonia, spreading by air droplets of coughs and sneezes. This is an acute disease of the lungs caused by bacterium streptococcus pneumonia, spreading by air droplets of coughs and sneezes. A. Pneumonia B. Fever C. Tuberculosis What is your answer? So, if you select A, you got the right answer. Good job! Number 2 this is a plant having a permanently woody main stem or trunk and usually green leaves. Again, this is a plant having a permanently woody main stem or trunk and usually green leaves. A. Flower B. Tree C. Grass If your answer is letter B, you got the right answer. Good job! Number three, it is a green organ of a plant in which chlorophyll is located. Again, it is a green organ of a plant in which chlorophyll is located. A. Flower B. Leaves C. Stem So if you pick D, you got the right answer. Number four, this is someone who paints. Again, this is someone who paints. A. Painter B. Paint C. Color What is your answer, kids? You selected the right answer. Good job! The answer is letter A. Number 5. A country located between France and Spain. Again, this is a country located between France and Spain. A. Philippines B. USA C. Andorra So, so if you pick letter C, you nailed it! You got the right answer! Congratulations to those who got a perfect score! Okay class, you will encounter those words or those answers when we are reading the story. So, the title of the short story for today is The Last Leaf by O. Henry. But before we are going to read the story, let's find out more about the author. William Sidney Porter, or known by his pseudonym O. Henry, was born on September 11, 1862 in North Carolina, U.S. and died on June 5, 1910 in New York. His stories express the effect of coincidence on character through humor, grim, or ironic. So in 1902, O. Henry arrived in New York from December 1903 to January 1906. He produced a story a week for the New York world, writing also for magazines. His first um, book, Cabbages and Kings in 1904, depicted fantastic characters against exotic Honduran backgrounds. So both the Four Million in 1906 and the Trim Lamp in 1907, in which his short story, The Last Leaf, was compiled explored the lives of the multitude of New York in daily um, routines and searchings for romance and adventure. So, you are knowledgeable about the author. So right now, I will read the story and I want you to listen carefully and understand its meaning because after I read the story, we'll have a quiz, okay? The Last Leaf by O. Henry 
Many artists lived in the Greenwich Village area of New York. Two young women named Sue and Jancy shared a studio apartment at the top of the three-story building. Jancy's real name was Joanna. In November, a cold unseen stranger came to visit the city. This disease, pneumonia, killed many people. Jancy lay on her bed, hardly moving. She looked through the small window. She could see the side of the brick house next to her building. One morning, a doctor examined Jansi and took her temperature. Then he spoke with Sue in another room. She has one chance in, let us say, ten, he said, and that chance is for her to want to leave. Your friend has made up her mind that she is not going to get well. Has she anything on her mind? She, she wanted to paint the Bay of Naples in Italy someday, said Sue. Paint? said the doctor. Bush! Has she anything on her mind worth thinking twice? A man, for example? A man? said Sue. Is a man worth but no, doctor. There is nothing of the kind. I will do all that science can do, said the doctor. But whenever my patient begins to count the courageous at her funeral, I take away 50% from the curative power of medicines. After the doctor had gone, Sue went into the workroom and cried. Then she went to Jansi's room with her drawing board, whistling ragtime. Jansi lay with her face toward the window. Sue stopped whistling, thinking she was asleep. She began making a pen and ink drawing for a story in a magazine. Young artists must work their way to art by making pictures for magazine stories. Sue heard a low sound several times repeated. She went quickly to the bedside. Jansi's eyes were open wide. She was looking out the window and counting, counting backward. Twelve, she said, and a little later, eleven, and then ten, and nine, and then eight, and seven. Almost together, Sue looked out the window. What was there to count? There was only an empty yard in the blank side of the house, seven meters away, an old ivy vine, going bad at the roots. Climb halfway up the wall. The cold breath of autumn had stricken leaves from the plant under its branches, almost bare, hung on the bricks. What is it, dear? asked Sue. Six, said Jansi. Quiet and... They're falling faster now. Three days ago, there were almost a hundred. It made my head hurt to count them. But now, it's easy. There goes another one. There are only five left now. Five what, dear? asked Sue leaves on the plant when the last one falls i must go too i've known that for three days didn't the doctor tell you oh i never heard of such a thing said sue what have old ivy leaves to do with your getting well and you used to love that vine don't be silly why the doctor told me this morning that your chances of forgetting real real soon were let's say exactly what he said he said the chances were 10 to 1 Try to eat some soap now, and let me go back to my drawing, so I can sell it to magazine and buy food and wine for us. You don't need to get any more wine, said Jancy, keeping her eyes fixed out the window. There goes another one. No, I don't want any soap. That leaves just four. I want to see the last one fall before it gets dark. Then I'll go too. Jancy dear, said Sue, will you promise me to keep your eyes closed and not look out the window until I am done working? I must hand those drawings in by tomorrow. Tell me as soon as you have finished, said Jancy, closing her eyes and lying white and still as a fallen statue. I want to see the last one fall. I'm tired of waiting and tired of thinking. I want to turn loose my hold on everything and go sailing down, down, just like one of those poor, tired leaves. Try to sleep, said Sue. I must call Mr. Berman up to be my model for my drawing for an old miner. Don't try to move until I come back. Old Berman was a painter who lived on the ground floor of the apartment building. Berman was a failure in art. For years, he had always been planning to paint a work of art, but had never yet begun it. He earned a little money by serving as a model to artists who could not pay for a professional model. He was a fierce little old man who protected the two young women in the studio apartment above him. Sue found Berman in his room. In one area was a blank canvas that had been waiting 25 years for the first line of paint. 
Su told him about Jonesy and how she feared that her friend would float away like a leaf. Old Berman was angered at such an idea. Are there people in the world with the foolishness to die because leaves drop off a vine? Why do you let that silly business come in her brain? She is very sick and weak, said Su, and the disease has left her mind full of strange ideas. This is not any place in which one so good as Miss Jansi shall lie sick, yelled Berman. Someday I will paint a masterpiece and we shall all go away. Jansi was sleeping when they went upstairs. Su pulled the shade down to cover the window. She and Berman went into the other room. They looked out the window fearfully at the ivy vine. Then they looked at each other without speaking. A cold rain was falling with, mixed with snow. Berman sat and posed as the miner. The next morning, Sue awoke after an hour's sleep. She found Chansey with wide open eyes staring at the covered window. Pulled up the shade. I want to see, she ordered quietly. Sue obeyed. After the beating rain and fierce wind that blew through the night, they yet stood against the wall one ivy leaf. It was the last one on the vine. It was still dark green at the center, but its edges were colored with the yellow. It hung bravely from the branch about seven meters above the ground. It is the last one, said Chansey. I thought it would, it would surely fall during the night. I hear the wind. It will fall today, and I shall die at the same time. Dear dear, said Sue, leaning her worn face down toward the bed. Think of me. If you won't think of yourself, what would I do? But Johnson did not answer. The next morning, when it was light, Johnson demanded that the window shade be raised. The ivy leaf was still there. Johnson lie for a long time looking at it, and then she called Sue to who was preparing chicken soup. I've been a bad girl, said Jansi. Something has made that last leaf stay there to show me how bad I was. It is wrong to want to die. You may bring me a little soap now. An hour later, she said, Someday, I hope to paint the Bay of Naples. Later in the day, the doctor came and so talked to him in the hallway. Even chances, said the doctor, with good care, you win. And now, I must see another case I have in your building. Berman, his name is some kind of an artist, I believe, pneumonia too. He is an old, weak man, and his case is severe. There is no hope for him, but he goes to the hospital today to ease his pain. The next day, the doctor said to Sue, She's out of danger, you won. Nutrition and care now, that's all. Later that day, Sue came to the bed where Jansi lie and put one arm around her. I have something to tell you, white mouse, she said. Mr. Berman died of pneumonia today in the hospital. He was sick only two days. They found him the morning of the first day in his room downstairs, helpless with pain. His shoes and clothing were completely wet and icy cold. They could not imagine where he had been on such a terrible night. And then they found a lantern still light. They found a ladder that had been moved from its place and art supplies and a painting board with green and yellow colors next on it. And look out the window, dear, at the last ivy leaf on the wall. Didn't you wonder why it never moved when the wind blew? Oh, darling, it is Berman's masterpiece. He painted it there the night that the last leaf fell. Okay, class, did you enjoy reading the story? Okay, that's good. So what is the moral of the story? Hmm? Okay, so the moral of the story is that we should help our loved ones even if we have to face the worst things too. Even if we face bad things, we should always help them, making sacrifices for people we love and giving them hope. So also, never compare and depend your life to things because your life is more valuable than anything. Okay? Is there any questions? Okay, everybody understand the story? Now, for your activity, I want you to answer this question. Number one, what is the title of the story? Number two, who is the author of the story? What was Chansey counting? What was Berman's masterpiece? What happened to the last leaf after beating rain and wild wind went on through the night? So for the evaluation, you will write your own ending of the story. So for your assignment, I draw your own masterpiece and write a short story about it. 
So that's all for today. See you in my next class. Bye!